the newspaper award this year goes to a remarkable coverage, a remarkable story about immigrants who have made it here only to enter into a 21st century version of sharecropping, of a kind of unique, uh, but not unfortunately all that common exploitation. When I was editing the LA Weekly in the 1990s and had assigned myself to the labor beat, uh, I was aware that there were uh, truckers working uh, to take the goods that come into the harbors of Los Angeles and Long Beach, to which 40% of the imports into the United States come, uh, and take them out to uh, these giant warehouses halfway to Palm Springs, where uh, Amazon and Target and Walmart and Home Depot uh, re repackage these and send them out to uh, their stores within a thousand mile radius. And these workers, even then, some of them were saying, well, my employer calls me an independent contractor. Uh, I'm not, and at the end of the day, I'm not really getting much money. I wrote a little about this. A number of other LA journalists and a number of other labor journalists wrote about it. But none of us had quite the, uh, the, the drive or the resources or the brilliance that Brett Murphy bought, brought to his effort at USA Today to expose what's really going on there. In 2008, the plight of these uh, really tens of thousands of uh, truckers, all of them immigrants, grew signally worse when the ports of LA and Los Angeles <clears throat> ordered that the trucks uh, be less polluting. And so the companies bought a new generation of trucks and then leased them to these drivers. And uh, the Brett story illustrates the consequences of that. There's one uh, worker uh, who made, I think, uh, $854 a week. That's not terrible. Uh, and then the company deducted the lease on the truck and uh, the gas expenses and the insurance and sent him a check for 67 cents. Uh, the problem is that that's not atypical, uh, that these drivers are forced to work in these conditions and if they leave, the company takes the truck back after all the drivers have paid to put into it. Um, what Brett did uh, with the backing of USA Today was interview 300 of these drivers over a very long period of time, read the port records to uh, make clear that they were working more than 14 hours a day, though the companies denied that, looked at the records of possibly more than 1,000 uh, cases that these drivers had brought to the State Labor Commission. Uh, and, and also, I should add that the State Labor Commission and, and occasionally the Labor Board ruled in 97% of the cases that the companies were misclassifying these drivers, that they weren't independent contractors, that they were employees, and that these deductions should not be taken from them. So a really massive effort to produce a really brilliant story. Uh, and the story concludes by going to these corporations that own those giant warehouses, uh, for whom these drivers are a key part of their supply chain, the link between Chinese production and American consumption. Uh, <clears throat> going to Amazon, going to Walmart, going to Target, going to Home Depot, and saying, what are you doing about this? And getting either no answer or an answer of, well, nothing. Uh, the story also actually enabled us to hear the voices of these drivers who made it here and found a really preposterous and uh, a degrading existence that they're fighting back against. One of the people who helped bring this to public attention and, cre and write this egregious wrong is Brett Murphy of USA Today. First of all, thank you, everyone. Thank you uh, for the Hillman Foundation for this. It's a really amazing honor just sharing the stage tonight with all these incredible uh, journalists. I. Uh, I didn't know Danny Glover was going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really happy uh, that people cared about this story. Um, there was a time where you know I was I was pretty anxious about that. I didn't think anybody would. Uh, on my last reporting trip uh, out in Long Beach, I had Airbnb to studio for three weeks uh, to finish the reporting, and I couldn't really sleep 
for a lot of that. Um, it was restless for two reasons. Uh, one, my photographer Omar was sleeping on the futon next to me, snoring like a grizzly bear. <laughs> and uh, two, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know if I was the right guy for the job. Um, a lot of folks had put a lot of trust in me, believed uh, in this story, but there was so much happening uh, on the national level. I didn't know if anyone would, would, would care. Um, but then I got to meet Jose Rodriguez. Uh, he was just the sweetest guy with the sweetest family. Um, I went to his apartment late at night in South Central LA, right next to the freeway. His son has uh, severe brain damage. His wife has breast cancer. And he was coming near the end of his contract. Um, he was one of the drivers that was in one of those lease to own programs. He had showed up for work and was told that he had to sign here if he wanted to keep his job. So he did. Um, and five years later, he still didn't have the truck he was promised. Uh, meanwhile, his savings had been poured into it. The family was struggling to get health care. None of these guys have health insurance because uh, they're not employees. Um, and his daughter, like a lot of families, pulled me aside and asked, can you talk some sense into him? Tell him to leave. You have to tell him to quit. Uh, I heard that a lot. And then I would ask the drivers, you know, why don't you just quit? And they would say, well, what do you mean? I've put everything into this. This is my life. Um, I have my life savings, my families. I took a, out a second mortgage. I had to sell the car. We haven't had been able to buy groceries all for the truck. It's their life. It really is. Um, so he would just say, just a couple more months, and then I'll loan it, and then it'll all be worth it. But a lot of guys, hundreds, uh, would get that far in their contract only to be fired by the company. Uh, it was really common. We would see that the company would make up excuses, like you had missed the delivery, you had gone to a funeral, you got sick, uh, and then just like that, they were fired, they lost the truck, and they lost all the money they had paid into it, and they were out of work with nothing. And it was one of the most egregious things we found while we were reporting. People's marriages fell apart. They ended up uh, eating out of food banks, all because they lost that, that truck. Um, one, of, uh, one of Jose's colleagues uh, at the same company, Rene Flores, who's a father of two from El Salvador, uh, he was fired uh, just for talking to us in the story. He was four years deep in his contract tens of thousands of dollars into it. Right after we published the first story, the company fired him. Uh, it, was, uh, it was the hardest moment, I think, in the reporting process. Um, and it really made me question kind of everything. Um, my editor, Chris, who's here tonight, um, helped talk me through a lot of moments of doubt like that and kind of assured me that these were the only stories worth telling. Uh, those that take place where nobody is looking, those where people are harmed without anyone to write about it. Uh, we did a front page story about Rene, and shortly after, I think the, this room will be happy to hear, he was scooped up by the Teamsters. <laughs> uh, throughout the, 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 the writing process, the arduous writing process, the only analogy we kept coming back to was this was modern modern day indentured servitude. Um, these kinds of labor abuses aren't just happening far away in the developing world like a lot of us have become accustomed to thinking. Um, instead, they're kind of right here in our backyard. Uh, there's a lot of stories like this that uh, we don't know about and that's what drew me to it from the beginning. Um, so I wanna thank everyone at USA Today, especially Chris for helping me bring all those facts uh, to the light. Uh, but most importantly, uh, I dedicate this to all the truckers who risked everything to tell us their story and to help this get out into the world. So thank you. Thank you.